So here with me now, we've got Emily joining us from New York, who's managed to bring paintings to life using a combination of TensorFlow.js and TensorFlow Core. Now this marriage of technologies across the stack is a super fun use case and something I'd love to see more of coming out of both the Python and the JS communities. So Emily, what did you make and tell us more about yourself? Uh, sure, so my name is Emily, I am a software engineer, and I recently made a fun project that riffs on this urban legend in which if you stand in front of the Mona Lisa, her eyes will follow you around. Uh, so this is known as the Mona Lisa effect. And uh, you know, obviously this doesn't actually happen in real life. And so uh, this digital portrait that I've made does just that. Um, so it's deployed at monalisaeffect.com. And if you pull that up and then turn on your webcam, then Mona Lisa's eyes will follow you around. That's super cool. I love that you've chosen to bring that to life. That's uh, uh, definitely a fun one to do. I'm curious to know like, what, what made you desire to do this in the first place? What was your inspiration here? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I'm not sure if there was like a particular thing or moment that gave rise to this project. Uh, not that I can remember distinctly, um, but I suppose you know this is probably born out of my multidisciplinary background and interests. You know, I love art, uh, but I also program professionally. Um, and I, I suppose I'm just the type of person that gets a lot of uh, like random, unrelated thoughts at the same time, and so I think when ideas collide, they just come out of uh, they come out of nowhere. Um, but I've also noticed that in a lot of machine learning projects, they do sort of use Mona Lisa as an example, and so this kind of just pushed it to a new um, a new level, right? Yeah. Very cool. So yeah, this is a super fun project, and clearly there's like loads of creative potential going on here. And I personally would love to see something like this in an art gallery with those new modern TVs that can look like paintings. And then of course, it can actually come to life as someone is in the gallery unexpectedly, which would be super, super cool. Um, so let's head over to the website and see it in action. Okay, so here we are on the web page, and hopefully I've enabled my webcam. And as I move to the right, you can see her face moving to the right there. And as I go to the left, she does indeed follow me to the left. That's super cool. I love this effect and uh, it seems to be working really well. So can you tell us more about how this is actually created? Like what models is it using behind the scenes and how it's all stitched together? Sure. Um, so I would say that a high, at a high level, this project pretty much involves two basic uh, things, right? The first of which is just generating a series of frames of Mona Lisa's head with her eyes sort of moving from left to right. Uh, and of course, a little bit of a head turn. Um, and this is on the Python then, side, right? This is the Python lab that we're speaking about. Yeah, right? mm -hmm. this I did all using um, the first order motion model, uh, which I'll explain a little bit later, uh, and did it in Python. Uh, and then the second part uh, was in was all in uh, JavaScript, and this was using TensorFlow.js. And that was just trying to figure out um, which of these frames to render. Uh, based on the viewer's location, um, and that's all detected through, uh, you know, the webcam piped through uh, TensorFlow.js. So. Awesome. And I believe for that second one there, you're using our face mesh model to do the, uh, where your face is positioned in the camera frame. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm using Blaze Face. Blaze Face. Um, oh, Blaze Face. Not but that. yeah, uh, uh, so for, for the first part, I used a deep learning based um, image animation model uh, known as the first order motion model, as I mentioned. Um, and for this, what you really need is like a driving video, um, which will dictate um, the image that you want to animate. Um, so I selected this mostly just for you know its ease of use, right? The author of this model, uh, Alexander Sierohonen, I hope I did not uh, butcher his name, but he provided an out of the box uh, set of weights that you could just um, apply. And uh, so for me, this really meant that I could you know clone this repo into a uh, you know into a collab notebook. From there, it was a matter of like uh, doing all the work to produce a video of me with my eyes moving from left to right, and then of course like in that notebook, um, just taking a screenshot of Mona Lisa's head and that video and feeding it into the model. Um, and then, of course, uh, producing the results. Mm -hmm. So essentially, it's taking the frames of the video that you produced, understanding your facial position in that time, and then trying to re-render the Mona Lisa's static face 
in different perspectives based on its best guesses of what that would look like, I guess, of its knowledge of human faces and so on and so forth. Exactly. Um, I think the challenge here, uh, the interesting part or, uh, was that, you know, I wanted to work within the constraints of uh, this first order motion model, uh, the constraints of this set of weights that the author provided, uh, just specifically so that I can avoid having to retrain the whole thing, because um, that would take a lot of time, that would take a lot of uh, resources. Um, so, yeah, working within these constraints meant that I had to uh, use a 256 by 256 image as well as a driving video. Um, and it also produced like a lower resolution than I would have liked. Um, because I guess if you do 256, 256, it meant a lower resolution image of the Mona Lisa's head, right? But I wanted to display not just the head, but the entire painting. Um, so my work around here was just to sort of take these frames and superimpose them on top of um, a high resolution uh, image of the painting. But the problem with that was that it was just uh, very obvious that it was a picture on top of another picture. Uh, so I did a lot of work around that and trying to figure out how do I, how do I get around this issue? The way I did this was by uh, yeah, gradually sort of uh, blending the, like for the head frame, gradually sort of blending it uh, blending the underlying image into it. And I did that just using, like just using a function that I guess at the end of the day looks like kind of like a mirrored uh, 2D sigmoid um, with values squashed from zero to one. And those values would indicate the percentage of um, opacity of the underlying image that would be taken in. And yeah, having seen this in action, it works surprisingly well, actually. I, I've seen this being overlaid and you know, the human eye doesn't really tell that it's actually a lower quality uh, version of that image. I think guess, I'm guessing because of the persistence of vision or something like this, as the frames blend, it's, it's a moving image rather than a static one. Our eyes are tricked by this kind of effect and it looks much higher res than it actually is. So that's super cool. So you got the, the images from stage one from Python, you got all the frames generated. So what's the second step of this process? How did you then get it all working in the web browser with TFJS? Sure. Um, so what I ended up doing was using um, TensorFlow. I knew that I wanted to feed um, basically webcam input to one of the models, right? Because we'd use a webcam to track where the user was. And based on that, we would pick um, a corresponding frame, right? If the user, if the viewer was to the left of the webcam, we would want to display, you know, a Mona Lisa with her eyes more to the left, right? So uh, I decided to use Blaze Space. Um, and yeah, there were a number of um, models that I could have selected, right? Yeah, like, exactly. We've got, we've got a few like body detection things and face detection out there. So um, yeah, for those of, those, those of you listening, we've got essentially face mesh, pose net, and body pics as well, which can all technically track the body around. Uh, but you went for Blaze Face. Maybe you can tell us like why you chose Blaze Face over the other ones. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually ended up playing with some of the models that you mentioned, specifically uh, Pope. I think really this is body pics and Posen, I think, two of them, uh, right? And uh, they, they actually proved just a little too, like, yeah, hardcore. They were kind of, like, computationally intensive. And I needed this animation to be convincing. Um, and in order to do that, it needed to be pretty instantaneous, right? Like, if you move slightly left, uh, Mona Lisa's eyes would need to also move like in real time along with you. And so Blaze Face was awesome because it was, um, it's super lightweight, right? Like uh, uh, it, it's fast, it's fast and lightweight and that's why I picked it. Um, and additionally, it was also built for, uh, for, for mobile in a way, right? And mobile input actually very much represents um, the input that I would be expecting for this project. Like I would expect that a viewer is in front of their like laptop webcam and potentially on mobile, um, and sort of front facing with their head forward. And I didn't expect I didn't expect that their head would be out of the frame. I expected them to be, sure. you know, uh, right. It's face. probably unlikely they're standing up as well, having a full body situation. So yeah, you want to check the general face region <laughs> to see where they are in exactly. the frame. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. So I'm just curious, will you be replicating this effect on other paintings for people? And if not, is it easy for someone to take your code and maybe use it on other paintings if they wanted to do so? Yeah, so I've definitely thought about um, 
like other fun applications of this. Uh, the feedback that I've heard from people is, uh, you know, Harry Potter, there's moving paintings, uh, moving images, right? So I thought that would be kind of fun, uh, but, you know, not quite sure about uh, what the like copyright issues are there. Um, so maybe not, but if other people wanted to, you know, replicate this on, you know, uh, images on, in the, in the um, public domain, uh, you can certainly go to my GitHub profile uh, and you can see my, uh, see, see all the code for it and you can, you know, start playing around using that as a starting point. Awesome. Very cool. And of course, if the Harry Potter folk are watching, uh, get in touch with Emily if you want to use it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> And on that note, actually, Emily's written a really amazing blog post article over on the TensorFlow blog. So if you'd like to go in a little bit more deeper detail, do check that out after the show as well. So that, thank you very much, Emily, for being on the show today. And we look forward to seeing what you create in the future. Well, thanks so much for having me.